Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the first Apple news and leaks post iPhone 11 Pro release. So we just had those drop and already people are talking about the 2020 iPhones. Progress must go on and in this video, let's see what that future looks like. We do wanna remind you that the iPhone 11 Pro giveaway is still ongoing. So four iPhone 11s, four iPhone 11 Pros, and all the details on that down below in the description. Plenty of news to talk about today. Let's kick it off with news of the 2020 iPhone design by Ming-Chi Ko. So in a new report obtained by Mac Rumors, he goes into detail on the styling in which direction Apple is taking the iPhone for their super cycle refresh in 2020. In case you didn't know, the 2020 iPhone will be featuring 5G technology, USB-C connectors, a larger display, a smaller display. The iPhone 12 Pro, we'll call it that, will be coming in a 5.4 and a 6.7 inch display variety. And then Apple could be potentially removing the notch or shrinking it from what we're hearing, bringing Touch ID back potentially, the ProMotion 120 hertz refresh rate display, the rear 3D camera and a five nanometer processor. So it's a huge year for them. They're gonna wanna encapsulate all of these changes in a new frame. And in his report, Ming-Chi Ko states that the 2020 iPhone will see a significant change in the design department, namely that frame. So the frame will be taking inspiration from the iPhone 4 on the surface. It's very likely this frame surface will be going back to a boxy shape, but it'll still retain the 2.5D glass on the front and back where the glass sort of curves into that frame. And in our concepts, we try to reflect that where it's still a bubbly look, almost rounded, but still a metal frame that's mostly straight it just give it some flowing depth here with our design so we'll be adjusting this as time goes on as we hear more rumors and what you're seeing on the back there is the fourth camera for time of flight the 2020 iPhones are getting that rear sensing 3d camera so a time of flight sensor on the back only makes sense and we added that now aside from the design changes Ming Chi Ko believes that the actual procedure for building the frame would change on a manufacturing level altogether he describes it as a more complex segmentation design new trend and injection molding procedures and sapphire or glass cover assembly to protect the trench injection molding structure. So the price of this new frame would rise 40 to 50% as a result. It could potentially improve the efficiency of cellular reception and signals outgoing and incoming to the iPhone. And this all tells me that Apple could have a very good reason for going back to a flat edge frame that there could be more behind it than just design. And the last thing you mentioned in that report is that the demand for this 2020 iPhone will be through the roof. Where Apple is shipping an estimated 75 million in 2019, he predicts 85 million for the second half of 2020. And in a separate report by Vania Geskin, he believes that Apple is prototyping at least one iPhone for 2020 release with no notch whatsoever. This would be the largest of the bunch, the 6.7 inch model. And apparently Apple has pushed all of the components with face ID, the dot projector, all up into the upper bezel, leaving the screen clean and clear, unobstructed, no notch whatsoever. Whatsoever, so your content is just flawless. And I love the idea of it. Whether or not it would happen in 2020 or 2021, he's iffy on that. But apparently this is coming from a reliable source, one that shared the iPhone 10 blueprints with him before anyone else. So there is some credibility there. It's a dream. Don't you doubt for a second that Apple is working on a display with no notch whatsoever. Just when they could release that is up for debate. It would make the 2020 iPhone even more appealing on top of all of the other changes coming to it. Concepts creator though doubts that this is possible. With the current sizing of the Face ID unit, Apple would have to make some dramatic changes to fit that up into the upper bezel. And in those notes, it's actually detailed that it would be a very thin module. That's some futuristic stuff that's simply not possible at this point in time. I think that Apple would need that under screen camera technology to make that possible. But we'll see. I mean, we've got an entire year of leaks ahead of us to go ahead and see how close Apple is to this technology. And the actual vice president of product marketing at Apple has dropped a hint regarding Touch ID, saying that Touch ID will continue to have a role in Apple products. In which form or fashion, we don't know. From what we've heard, Apple is trying to bring it back to future iPhones in conjunction with Face ID. So could this be a precursor to that? And it seems too good to be true, but the Apple logo may one day glow on your iPhone. A new patent submitted by Apple just the other day 
picked up by Apple Insider, details adjustable decoration, so a color changing LED on the back of your iPhone, which would presumably be in the Apple logo, that would change depending on the notification coming to the device. It details iPhones, iPads, different computers as well, so Apple could be making a huge resurgence in the glowing logo. Apparently it would be adjustable depending on the notification, such as an incoming call or a calendar reminder. I love the prospect of it. I've always liked the idea of a glowing logo. They just become really hard to do nowadays so it's not viable but to see it coming from Apple man that would be beautiful I'd love that and the future is coming closer TSMC has just announced that five nanometer chips will be possible and they'll be producing them as early as March of 2020 meaning that the Apple a14 which was rumored to be five nanometers will be possible and it'll be a normal thing by the time it's out there could even be phones coming out with this five nanometer process before Apple's upcoming iPhone 12 and a very interesting internal change that could eventually come to the iPhone was just spotted by iFixit. So in this year's Apple Watch Series 5, the 40 millimeter version, they spotted a new battery and a new encasing technique made out of aluminum instead of the usual foil, which allows the battery to become even more dense in the same area. Compared to last year's Series 4, the battery really didn't grow much in size, but that new casing technique meant a more dense battery was allowed inside thanks to a more space efficient method of sealing the batteries. And that's awesome. Not only is it more durable and easier to replace the battery thanks to it not being on adhesive, it looks cooler too. And eventually I could see this coming to the iPhone. They're saying that Apple could be testing this on a very low key scale on the smaller Apple Watch, which not many people pay attention to. And another very interesting change on the iPhone 11 Pro Max internally. So iFixit found that there's little controller on the bottom that's connected to the wireless charger and connected to the battery. The battery actually has two separate plugs now, which is interesting. And they're guessing that this could be some sort of reverse wireless charging feature that Apple could enable in the future. But it also could be just something that Apple uses to monitor the battery since it has gotten bigger on this year's release. We'll definitely see with time, but apparently the hardware is just not enough to reverse wireless charge as it's a very inefficient process. And future iPhones could add that with larger batteries, but it's unlikely that we'll see that on this year's release. Also wanted to add that we inadvertently predicted that new Tetris piece camera lens on this year's iPhone. So we guessed that a long time ago and lo and behold, it became true. Very interesting. And Apple has done it again. The iPhone 11 Pro has the best display ever in a smartphone. According to DisplayMate, they've tested it against every other smartphone and this is simply the best. Samsung's latest display technology plus Apple's color calibration techniques equals a deadly combo. And I can't wait for micro LED. This is simply the best that OLED can get right now. And past that, we'll see with micro LED. I'm, I'm very impressed. Apple did so well with the 11 Pro. And some separate leaks, one from Sonny Dixon, where he shares the new refreshed iPad Pro with the triple lens camera. This is a dummy unit of it, but he says it's the finalized design. Now he says the spin that Apple is putting on this device is you'll be able to shoot and edit 4K video all in one device without having to take your heavy Mac hardware with you on the fly like the MacBook Pro. Very cool, I guess. The lens is not the same as the 11 Pro. It's more encapsulated in one little unit instead of being part of the back and glass. iPad Pro is obviously metal, so it needs a separate unit but very interesting to see what Apple's doing there. And could the AirPods 3 have leaked? This showed up on Slash Leaks with a design language very similar to Apple's. It shows sort of in-ear, on-ear blend headphones here with a shorter stem than current AirPods, more fat and bigger exhaust ports for better audio. Apparently the AirPods 3 or AirPods Pro, which are coming out will be very focused on sound and this could be it. I've noticed the LED on the front looks similar to the AirPods 2 case and the hinge on the back. From what we've heard, these should have launched by the end of 2019. We might have one more event in October where Apple could reveal them. And some software news. Today, iOS 13.1.1 was released with a number of bug fixes. The ones that I think are most important here are a battery drain fix, Siri request recognition issues have been fixed, and the third-party keyboard security issue has been fixed where it would be granted full access even though you didn't allow it. Would recommend updating to that one. Mac Rumors is also saying they're seeing iOS 13.2 visiting their website, so that one should be in beta stage here next week. And I'm hoping we'll be seeing those new emojis with Unicode 12 that includes 59 new emojis 
in iOS 13.2. I have a very good feeling we will. And the change I didn't catch in iOS 13.1 is there were more than two emojis that Apple fixed. Actually, 24 emojis were adjusted in iOS 13.1 for realism, a couple of those being the octopus and the squid. So Apple has made them more anatomically correct. And there are a number of other ones where they adjusted the lighting and the sizing. Also very interesting is that Apple released a couple software updates for older devices, 12.4.2 and watchOS 5.3.2 which includes security fixes for phones that aren't getting iOS 13. I absolutely love Apple's dedication to older phones. They continue to update them. I mean, the iPhone 4 and 4S got an update not too long ago. That's ridiculous. And by far the absolute craziest news in the jailbreak world, a boot ROM exploit has been achieved on the Apple A5, so the 4S, up to the iPhone 10. meaning these devices will have a jailbreak for life. A boot ROM exploit is not patchable by software. It's a flaw in the actual hardware. This was found by Axiom X. I'm very curious to see how this will all play out as it's basically a huge glaring hole in the phone that Apple cannot fix and they're not gonna take in every iPhone to replace. We'll see how it all unfolds. For the people that love a jailbreak, it means you will be jailbreakable for life. For the people that are afraid, I really wouldn't be. You need physical access to the device to put it into DFU mode, and that's not a threat that you can receive over the internet. Although if you are arrested, it makes a police officer's job so much easier if they have your device in hand. The last thing I wanted to mention is on our case, we're actually doing a frosted finish on the 11 Pro Series cases. I wanna make that one the most special with the plates embedded in clear and the frosted touch because no one has done it yet. And I I definitely like the idea of that. It's a super premium case for the newest phones. Stay tuned on that at Phone Rebel if you want to keep up on the updates. But stay tuned. 2020 is going to be a killer year. I'm just I'm excited for the future, man. Peace.